So I've been wanting to talk about Halo for some time now, specifically the TV show they label as Halo. My channel didn't quite exist when season 1 was released, but with season 2 now dropping, this is the perfect time to talk about it. However, there isn't really much to say about the content of season 1. It simply is not a Halo show. It is just a scam that uses imagery from the franchise in order to trick people into watching something that is completely different. The show's creators even say as much. Instead of giving us a faithful adaptation of the games, we get to watch John Cheeks and Great Value Corp Cortana get lectured by Pappy McStupid, and then they die. Alright dude, what the flip? How do you botch it this bad? You have the Xbox equivalent of Super Mario. He's been the face of the console since its conception, with fans hoping for a live-action adaptation since day one. For those who don't know, Halo is the story of a human-alien war that gets flipped on its head when a mysterious ring world gets discovered and the secrets within it get unleashed. In the first game, you follow Captain Keys and the ever-depleting crew of his ship, the Pillar of Autumn, as they crash land on this ring world while trying to find a way to survive and make it back to Earth. You play as the Master Chief the last remnant of a morally questionable super soldier program, as he, his AI companion Cortana, and a rotating cast of marines try to survive the looming alien threat, understand the secrets of this world, and try to find a way out. The Master Chief himself is a rather stoic figure who prefers actions over words. He has his own layers of mystery to him. As previously mentioned, he is the last of his kind, before the retcons, and never reveals his true face. Naturally, none of the information I just told you is portrayed within the show, and guess what they immediately do with Master Chief's biggest trademark. You're wrong. It never happened. Uh, but we gotta show his face because that's the only way the audience can relate to the character. If you feel that that's the case, then you are not qualified as writers, actors, or directors to be making this show. People who are more talented could get the job done the way it was meant to be. There is no escape. Don't make me destroy you. Steven, 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 li listen, please. A chance like this isn't gonna come around again. Do not fuck this up for us. Go that way. You'll be malfunctioning within a day, you nearsighted scrap pile. Now that we're both here, will you tell me your tale? Yeah, but it's a long story, so I want to take my time. Hey, ho neighbor! Hey, Wilson. This concept has been done many times over already, even in Halo itself. It's a regular family reunion. Keep him. I gave him to you. I'll honor him my own way. Hello, I am 343 Guilty Spark. I am the monitor of installation 04. I am a monument to all your sins. There are many faceless, inhuman characters that are profoundly relatable. To say that you simply can't make this work is lazy at best, and more likely just incompetent. But not only do you blop around his doofy face all the time, you also flaunt his chocolate starfish on full display. Which, if you had any idea what you were doing, you would know that absolutely nobody wanted to see that. What you should do is remove Joe Slapass, since the true story of Halo isn't meant for him, then replace him with a more deserving body actor, and bring back Steve Downs for the voice. Cortana, I don't care how comically large the spoon is, it's still just a spoonful. On top of Cheeky Chief, we get this thing that they claim to be Cortana. In the games, Cortana is presented as a confident and fun supercomputer that is Chief's closest companion and is always there to point him in the right direction. In the show, Cortana is an awkward ditz that is constantly being told to shut up. Me, inside your head, now. How much time was left? You don't want to know. I know what you're thinking. And it's crazy. So, stay here. Unfortunately for us both, I like crazy. Cortana. Yes, Chief? I need you to do me a favor. Anything. Stop talking. Imagine having this design to work with, alongside the original actress that played her, and this is what you turn her into. Hello, Master Chief. 
I'm Cortana. No, you ain't! Who wanted this? You people are just trying to fix things that aren't broken, and patting yourselves on the back for it as if you aren't just wasting everyone's time and money. You put Jacob and Miranda Keys in the show, but they look a little different. Diversity casting is always a fun kind of controversy to crack open, so let's get into it. Along with these two, you have all sorts of brand new characters that come from various backgrounds, including Discount Rose Tico and Dude McWhat's his name. There's nothing inherently wrong with having them there. New characters are always welcome, so long as they are done well. The problem is that nobody is done well in the show, and I find this style of casting to be particularly insulting for a franchise like Halo because it doesn't need it. Let's go down the line. You have Cortana, an AI that is about as female as an AI can get, who is essentially the co-star that does all the talking for Chief and is always along for the ride. You have Miranda Keys, a woman of power whom the Master Chief takes orders from. You have Dr. Halsey, the morally questionable woman that raised Master Chief. You have a wide variety of reoccurring Marines that are constantly rotating throughout the various missions in the game, one of the most memorable of which is played by Michelle Rodriguez. Stick my foot so far up your ass, you'll be talking shit for weeks. The villains of Halo, aka of the Covenant are made up of various alien races, but they do provide work for many diverse voice actors, so surely that counts for something. You have Palmer in the Spartan Fours, Dr. Anders, Serena, Isabel, and oh yeah, Sergeant Freaking Johnson. You hit Lorraine. N no, sir. Then listen up. You had your chance to be afraid before you joined my beloved corps, but to guide you back to the true path, I brought this motivational device. Our big green style cannot be defeated! What about that scare? We all run the simulations. They're tough, but they ain't invincible. Stay with the Master Chief. You'll know what to do. For those watching this video that aren't familiar with Halo, you have to understand that this guy is everyone's favorite character. Dear humanity, we regret being alien bastards. We regret coming to Earth. And we most definitely regret the core just blew up our raggedy ass fleet! Hoorah! You would have to do some hard digging to find people that genuinely don't like him. He's cool. How you doing? He's funny. You look nice. Thank you. He's heroic. You know, your father never asked me for help either. And his speeches are immaculate. Man, we let those dumb bugs out to the middle of nowhere to keep them from getting their filthy claws on Earth. But we stumbled onto something that's so hot for that they're scrambling over each other to get it. Well, I don't care if it's God's own anti-son of a bitch machine or a giant hula hoop, we're not gonna let them have it. What we will let them have is a belly full of lead and a pool of their own blood to drown in. Am I right, Marines? Sir, yes, sir! He is everything you could want in a likable side character, and a TV show would be a perfect place to give someone like him more screen time with a much more expanded story than what the games had to offer. But no, not only did they fail to do that, but they failed to even put Sergeant Johnson in the show at all. He is one of the most iconic black characters in gaming, and they gave his spot to Captain Keys. Ladies and gentlemen, we are watching Tropic Thunder play out IRL. Because they had one good party for a black man, they gave it to Crocodile Dundee. You don't need to change Captain Keys nor his daughter, nor do you need to add all these dumb weirdos. Halo's cast of characters was already perfectly fine. These showrunners are still just fixing things that aren't broken. In traveling further down the diversity train, we have this strong independent female antagonist, which is neato until you realize that in the games, you never at any point fight human enemies, even during the points where you play as a villain. So unless the Master Chief needs ammo, this creative decision simply is not Halo. Plus, if you know the games, there's a very good reason why she can't look the way she does and be on the enemy team. But you know what? This show needed a villain like her, because Halo's original villain roster just couldn't cut it. Why would you want the scary and powerful Tartarus, the mysterious and frustrating Guilty Spark, the horrifying Gravemind, the tragic heretic, or a pre-converted arbiter, amongst others. When instead we could have this random woman, alongside these botched clones that they claim to be prophets. One could argue that they need more human characters in various roles, because having an all-CG villain could be too expensive. But if this is the case, then you simply cannot afford to make a Halo show, and you should have given up long before revealing this embarrassment. And speaking of effects... They're not great. They aren't the worst thing ever. But when you compare them to the games, these scenes don't hold up. Right. 
Switch to secondary. The records show efficient behavior operating in hazardous situations. No! And I see a lot of you out there saying, Oh, the show was bad and all, but at least it had some cool fight scenes. No, it had mid fight scenes, at best. You're just desperate for something to like. It's not your fault for being optimistic, but for Pete's sake, please raise your standards. Now, all of these complaints and criticisms are child's play when compared to the biggest sin, that being the music. They were handed one of the most iconic soundtracks in gaming, one so beloved that it stands shoulder to shoulder with the greats like Mario and Zelda. It's a meme for crying out loud. But instead of relying on it for instant goodwill with your audience, you use some cheap SoundCloud cover of In The Air tonight? Are you people insane? You really have no idea what you're doing, do you? This is so dumb that it's migraine inducing. How can you fail this bad on every level? You're just pissing away time and money because you are too stupid and arrogant to just plagiarize the work of people that are far more talented than you are. It would seem like there's been an effort made for damage control with season two. But unless they scrap the entire first season and start over, then it is too little too late. Will they succeed? Let's find out.